I've made a playlist of all the music I talk about in this video on Prime Phonic. It's a really cool app for classical music, and I'll talk more about that at the end. So I had an English drama music general life teacher at high school who I think I can credit with giving me that foundational love of music, introducing me to the wider world of art and kickstarting a great journey of discovery. But I remember him once saying in class, imagine what it would have been like to be at English court at the turn of the 17th century how thrilling it would have been to watch the theatre. Because between 1599 and 1608, in a span of about five years, you have Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear, Othello, Twelfth Night, Antony and Cleopatra. And looking back, it seems like now that there was a set of ten golden years for theatre, all spearheaded by one playwright. More recently, I was reading an essay by Christopher Butler, where he writes that if you were in Europe in 1913, you could have heard premieres for all the following pieces of music. Debussy's Je, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, Schmidt's La Tragedie de Salome, Vaughan Williams' A Sea Symphony, Webern's Six Pieces for Orchestra, Faure's Penelope, some of Debussy's Second Book of Preludes, Delius on hearing the first cuckoo in spring, Rachmaninoff's The Bells, and Schoenberg's Gurrelieder, and the list goes on and on. Not all of these pieces actually came out in 1913, but presumably Butler meant you could hear local premieres if you were in some European capital. But what this list does show off is the sheer diversity of music that was being written in that period. We call it the fin de siècle, or the end of the century, or more specifically, the end of an era. In music, we had recently had the great post-romantic giant Mahler with his mighty Eighth Symphony. How could music go any bigger? And then there was his Ninth Symphony, which Bernstein, in his amazing Harvard lectures, reads as a farewell to life, but also a farewell to music as we know it. In 1911, this ultra-romantic giant died. And just a few years later, the First World War would break out in Europe, and the musical spirit of optimism, romantic idealism, and even decadence would be shattered by a wake of cynicism, pessimism, and jarring irony. So, in 1913, we really were on the brink of a series of events from which we could never return. This truly was the end of an era. Just listen to the music that was being performed. In the years leading up to 1913, there'd been this huge maximalizing of post-romantic expression. As I said, Mahler with his 8th and 9th symphonies, but also Rachmaninoff with his 2nd symphony. And his incredibly virtuosic 3rd piano concerto. culminating in The Bells in 1913. <laughs> Meanwhile, there was Stravinsky with his dazzling Firebird. Scriabin with his sublime Poem of Ecstasy. Vaughan Williams with his gorgeous Fantasia for Thomas Tallis. And later, his massive, epic sea symphony. One of my favourites when I first discovered music. So everyone was taking romantic music to the max, and even Schoenberg was going maximal, ultra-romantic with his Lieder, a most enormous work. <laughs> and 
And yet, at the same time, all these works of what we might call impressionist music were being written. There was Ravel with Daphnis and Chloe. Delius in England with On Hearing the First Cuckoo in Spring. And Debussy was actually really pushing the boundaries of his style, writing extraordinary colours for the ballet Je, which is an immensely difficult but rewarding piece of music. And also his second book of preludes, which were pushing the stylistic boat out into deeper waters. And yet, alongside this stretching of the limits of post-romantic and impressionist music, there came a new kind of music, which we commonly call expressionist, moving away from the boundaries of tonal constrictions. Schoenberg had recently composed his five pieces for orchestra. And in 1913, depending on where you were, you might have heard the premiere not only to Gurelida, but to Piero Lunaire. <laughs> also in 1913, you could have heard Weben's expressionist Flickering Nightmares, which are his six pieces for orchestra. And of course, how could we leave out Stravinsky's Rite of Spring? Neither romantic, nor expressionist, nor impressionist. Completely its own beast, making an enormous and indelible impact on Western art music. <laughs> Imagine what it would have been like to be a European concert goer around that time, to watch or rather hear history unfolding in front of you, to hear these lasting masterpieces of Western music be brought to life for the first time. One last mention has to go to Lily Boulanger. 1913 was the year that Lily Boulanger won the Prix de Rome in Paris for her amazing cantata Faust et Hélène. It's an extraordinary work, well worth a listen, especially for the last 15 minutes. Lily's sister, Nadia Boulanger, would go on to teach pretty much every great classical musician of the 20th century. Lily, however, tragically died incredibly young. She was aged 24 and she died of malaria in 1918, so we just don't know what masterpieces we were deprived of. She was, however, amongst the first female composers to be publicly acknowledged and acclaimed by a major institution, marking a significant moment in the history of female recognition in the arts. Had she lived on, she might well have been one of the absolute greats of the 20th century, judging from the music she left us with. Because even by 24 years old, the music she left us is of an extraordinary quality. I've made a playlist of all these golden pieces on Primephonic. Primephonic is a really cool app for classical music lovers, or for people who want to discover more classical music. It has playlists catered for people at any level, very cool browsing functions, tons of world-class recommended recordings. It's a great place to learn more and discover more about whatever music you're interested in. And I've found some absolute gems using this app. Brilliant recordings, top sound quality, and amazing for music discovery. If you want to get two months of Primephonic absolutely free, then visit the link in the description and use the voucher code inside the score. This will give you two months free so you can try out the app and see if it's right for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.